Okay, where to start? There's this, this is gonna be a long video. Let's just let's just accept it and move on and keep going. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It has been a while. I feel like I have not spoken to a camera in so long. Even though I've been uploading a video every week, so for you guys it probably just seems normal for me. Those videos were pre-filmed like two months ago because I have been oh my gosh that busy lately. The only time I have in the week where I'm not like literally doing something is a couple of hours on a Saturday afternoon. So that is where I am right now. Otherwise I have work, uni, training, something going on. So it's been busy, but I've been really enjoying it. Um, do I do a quick little life update or save it for a vlog? <sighs> Apologies about this lighting if it's distracting. Um, I just, I feel weird vlogging right now. I feel like, is this like, I can't see myself in the viewfinder. It's been so long. But yeah, let's just do a little life update. Um, first things first, had the biggest, most painful calf cramp of my life at like 5.30 a.m. this morning when I in fact was actually asleep because my I didn't start till 7 today. So that was a really nice sleep in for me. Crazy, another crazy thought. I was like the other day, me, Imi, a year ago thinking of 6 a.m. as a sleep in would be screaming. But me now I'm like, cheering on the day I get to sleep into 6 a.m. Um, so yeah, 5.30, oh, I woke up screaming. Like I genuinely woke up like, ah, at 5.30 a.m. It was so painful, so painful. And it was like that painful that like flexing my foot felt like an intense stretch. Mm, mm. Mm. And then I woke up this morning and have been like having doms in my calf all day long. So that's how intense the cramp was. Is That's my life update. Let's get on with the video. Kidding, let's have a little bit more of a life update. So the last two months I've literally been working more than 30 hours a week, been doing full-time uni, full-time training, and it's just crazy. So I haven't had time to vlog or sleep for that matter. But in saying that, although I have gotten stressed quite a bit, I have been very happy like I've been enjoying what I've been doing and also really focusing on my health as well I know that sounds crazy because I'm saying like how busy I am but I mean like fueling myself recovering properly eating good so I can be strong and healthy and have a good season and I last night did a 400 hurdle time trial so that possibly probably it's probably why my calf was a bit hasn't gone this morning two comments that I saw that I haven't had time to reply to but I saw pop up that I just wanted to quickly address one, focusing too much on getting a period. I do not focus that much on getting a period. Honestly, I forget that periods exist most days. But the reason I talk about it in my getting better vlogs is because it, like, it's relevant to those vlogs. And it is like an indicator that's going to be, you know, something that I know my health is getting better. But there's so many other indicators like my happiness, how I'm running and recovering better. And like just feeling better mood wise and physically in general. So they're the main things. Um, and then what was the other thing that someone commented that I wanted to address? I forget. Moving on. Jokes I really want to remember. I don't know. Maybe the comments I get about like every now and then someone's like, I really think your vlog should be shorter. And then I'm kind of just like, don't watch the whole thing then. If you want a 20 minute vlog, literally watch 20 minutes of the vlog and then stop watching. Sorry, that sounded really beefy, but honestly, I just talk too much. So my vlogs are too long. Sorry. I thought I would make this video because as I said, I've been working a lot and I've been working, most of you guys know, as a PT. I have almost been working as a PT for six months now and one of the things that I found really helpful is even though it's stressful to be studying at uni at the same time, what I'm learning is super relevant to, oh no, oh I thought the light was going to, the sun, I thought it was going to really mess me up. What I'm learning because I study sports and exercise science is super relevant to my job and I also am very passionate about it. I love you know, helping people and changing someone's life or just making them feel good about an achievement and or just getting healthier and just being happier so i love what i'm doing and it's really helpful besides the hours and time that i've been learning a lot of relevant content so i can help clients as well as educate them on how to train and how training them i can educate them on like the science behind it and why it's so important to do certain things that they might not be doing so i wanted to make this video to just have a little chat about a lot of the wild and crazy and just like really insane misconceptions that I've heard over the last six months of doing PT but also to talk about a lot of like just health and fitness misconceptions maybe some myths and just also general things that I just feel like 
I didn't talk about enough on my channel because I just thought it was, I just took it as a given that everybody knows this. But I realized that a lot of people don't know these basics. So I was like, I'm going to make this video and talk a little bit about it. As I said, I haven't got time in the week. So I haven't planned it out a lot. I spent like an hour quickly planning how I want to talk about this video, but I haven't researched heaps of literature. So I'm going to try and go through a little bit of literature while editing this to add into the video. So I'll reference all of that stuff below. Another thing I've learned is it's so important to have like evidence to back up the things that you talk about and it could always be disproven everything's fluctuating nothing is set in stone something we believe now can be disproven soon but it's just nice to have some thought put into it and science behind it rather than some crazy claims that big health and fitness people sometimes preach such as being paleo I'm just going to talk about a few different topics. I'll pop the topic up on the screen before I talk about it and I'm going to try and include some evidence but I'm just going to chat about it and talk about things that I have been a little bit shocked by and a lot of this stuff is you know common knowledge so some of it you might be like yeah that's obvious. So I love to make a connection with people and I'm you guys know how honest and open I am so I think that's something really important to have with a trainer and a coach. They have to know where you are mentally and physically and just know how you're thinking and how you're feeling so i am i let people open up to me i'm not judgmental at all so when people what is that like i encourage people to open up to me and be completely honest with me um and i'm not judging people at all for thinking this stuff i think it's more just important that people do know and i like to try and educate people when we are in like a consult for example but some of this stuff that people have t told me in consults and they're just so misled so the first thing i wanted to chat about is just diet because the biggest misconceptions and things that people say are surrounding the topic of diet. So I study sports and exercise science and I'm a personal trainer. So I'm not an accredited or qualified dietitian. I have done a lot of research on the topic of nutrition, but I'm not a dietitian. This is just coming from someone who knows quite a bit about nutrition and what I've heard from people who don't know anything about it. Sorry, if I look down, I have a long list of things that I wanted to chat about. And I'm too low right now because I was sitting on my foot before. Okay, where to start? There's this, this is going to be a long video. Let's just, let's just accept it and move on and keep going. Juice cleansers. I had a client who um, told me that she wanted to lose weight very fast. Um, another thing that I just want to add with weight loss is the people that want to lose weight need to lose weight. If somebody comes to me and they want, a, they have a weight loss goal and they don't, they're like thin and healthy, then I will change that goal and I won't make that a goal. I'm upfront with people. So when I talk about weight loss, I know a lot of people on my channel are here from my ED content. So this is obviously not relevant to you. Take everything with a grain of salt. Not everything is relevant to you. But when I talk about weight loss clients, I'm not influenced by them at all. Honestly, I'm kind of inspired to be healthy. Like, I feel like I need to lead by example. The other thing I wanted to include in my life update was that I've just been feeling very inspired lately to really recover and fuel myself because I keep using visualization of where I want to be in my sport in the next year or so. So I'm going to go more into that in a vlog soon. But anyway, so weight loss clients. This is relevant to people who are overweight or obese. I have an unhealthy weight and that puts them at risk for ill health and they don't feel good. Often, people that need to lose weight want to do it drastically, which is, we will get to that, but losing weight drastically is unfavorable for your health. Um, and it's also unsustainable, and it will just cause you to gain back more weight. Juice cleansers. So I had this client who was wanted to lose a drastic amount of weight in a short period of time and said they would just go on a juice cleanse. And then they also said, when I tried to explain that juice cleansers were ridiculous, that apparently some doctor said it cured cancer. Okay, okay. I don't even know where to begin for this, besides the fact that... First of oh no, I don't even have a place to begin. Okay, so juice cleansers or any detoxing is ridiculous. Like, just absolutely ridiculous. First of all, your liver is what detoxes your body, not drinking a whole bunch of sugar water. Juice is... Obviously, I'm not going to say food is to be afraid of. Like, eat juice, sorry, drink juice, or eat it, whatever you do you. But only drinking juice is so unhealthy. You need fiber, you need macronutrients, you need micronutrients, you need carbohydrates, you need protein, and you need healthy fats. And all that is giving you is a drink of sugar. So juice is the sugar squeezed out of fruit. You get rid of the fiber, the best bit of the fruit. That has a lot of the micronutrients and vitamins in it as well. 
and all you're drinking is the sugar from that fruit and the carbs and that's not a bad thing but it is a bad thing if that's all you're going to be consuming and if you're in a big deficit which you'll probably oh no you might not be in a deficit by only eating drinking juices because they're not filling at all you could drink like 6,000 calories of juice in a day if that's all you're having and not be full like you'd be full for a bit while your volume is while your stomach's full of the liquid volume and then you pee it out but anyway I tried to explain to her that it's you need vegetables you need protein you need actual food and mm, all that would happen if you went on a juice cleanse is that you would just drink a whole lot of sugar yes the sugar in fruit is good sugar but you're getting rid of the fiber which is what makes it healthy for you and you're just drinking the sugar component and that's and then if you are in a deficit because your juice cleanse you're just I'm, I'm gonna leave this topic there even though I didn't even get into it properly because I just can't even Mm. So many clients who aren't at a favorable weight for them, they're a little bit overweight and they eat in a huge deficit. So you would think if you under eat a lot, then you wouldn't be overweight. But no, they under eat by so much that it's unsustainable and they go through this yo-yo dieting phase. They're eating the daily requirements or less than what a toddler needs. So then they'll go through big binge days or periods where they need to eat so much. And the bad thing about that is the unhealthy and unfavorable weight regain. So jokes, that's not the only bad thing. There's lots of bad things. I had a client who was following a Noom. 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 I don't know much about it, but all I know is that she was eating a thousand calories in the day. And I literally said to her, do you know what the daily requirements for a toddler are? She was like, no, what are they? And I said, depending on the size of that toddler, between 1,000 to 1,400 calories is how much a toddler needs. So you're eating less than what a toddler needs. That's not going to sustain your body to be at maintenance calories. It's going to be making you drop weight drastically. But the bad thing about that is you're going to be dropping lean tissue. Lean tissue is muscle mass, bone mass. Whoa, the sun just went behind a cloud. And it's not fat mass. And of course, if you're in a huge deficit, you also lose body fat, but you lose too much lean tissue for that to even be favorable whatsoever. Because then when you eat like a normal person again, or more often than not, you eat too much because you've been unsustainably eating really low and your body, your hunger hormones just start to be like ghrelin at your face and make you really hungry. Your hormones aren't working properly. You're going to overeat and then the thing about that extra weight regain is that you put on more body fat than you lost so let me just provide like an example say someone loses 10 kilos from drastically under eating say 30 percent is this is a random number it would not be these numbers but say 30 percent is muscle mass or lean mass and 70 percent is fat mass then because they went through that really huge deficit and restricted their eating they will more than likely, majority of the time, put back on that 10 kilos. More often than not, they put on more than that. But let's say they just put back on the 10 kilos. This time, 50% is going to be fat mass and 50% is lean mass. So what they did was they just gained more body fat than last time and they lost lean mass, which is super, super, super unfavorable. For your health long term and just presently, it's not great for your health. Lean tissue is so important for our functioning and extra adiposity or fat tissue for someone who is at a healthy weight and or overweight. That extra adiposity for someone who is overweight is very unfavorable and it's inflammatory for your body and it leads to chronic diseases. This is proven that drastically dropping weight and not doing it incrementally and slowly and gradually leads to weight rebound and that it leads to the unfavorable weight loss and weight gain. The reason that I always promote for weight loss clients to do it slowly, I'd rather it be super, super slow, is so they can build muscle mass and have a favorable body composition. So they have more muscle mass and less fat mass. And I'm not talking, I feel like I have to always go into this because people are going to think I'm like coming from a negative place from having no body fat and being lean. I'm not talking about that end of the spectrum. I'm talking about the regular human and the majority of our population is overweight and a high amount of our population is obese. So I'm talking about the general population, not the extreme end of the scale. On the extreme end of the scale, you need a good enough amount of body fat for your healthy functioning hormones. And I guess this is why I haven't made this video because I've never really thought about the other end, having too much body fat. Some of the diet 
things that I just wanted to address is what people are consuming. So obviously people are eating in these, there's lots of people going through these huge deficits and then losing all this favorable weight with a little bit of unfavorable weight, meaning they lose lots of lean tissue and a little bit of fat tissue. And then that causes them to gain back lots of fat tissue and not much lean tissue because lean tissue like muscle mass and bone mass is very hard to gain. And that's why you don't want to drop it all because it's so important, especially as you age. Losing bone tissue once you're over 40s and 50s, especially for a female, because you no longer have the hormones that promote building bone tissue is like you can't gain it back anymore. You just have to stop losing it. So I, when I had this client who literally had told me she fractured her foot going for a walk and she was eating a 1000 calorie diet, she's 50 plus, And I just said, we can't in increase your bones anymore. That when you lose it, it's gone. We need to just stop losing it. So you cannot eat in such a big deficit because it's going to make you hunched over when you're an old lady and osteoporotic. Anyway, so with diet, not getting enough protein and expecting to be lean or build muscle or build favorable tissue, that's another issue. So obviously not getting enough energy and calories in general is an issue, but not getting enough protein is an issue. People don't eat enough protein. Most of the time people do eat enough protein because they're just in a surplus. And if you're eating too many calories, then you'll probably hit your protein needs. For those that are eating enough food, and if you ask them what they're eating, the protein is not high enough. I don't believe the protein recommendations um, for most countries, at least for my country, is enough. It needs to be higher. I like to aim for two grams of protein per kilo of body weight. So I'm approximately 50 kilos, a little bit more now because gains. Um, <laughs> so I aim for at least 100 grams of protein, which is a lot and I find it hard to get. I always have like a protein shake, I like the Macro Mike ones and the Googies ones. This is not sponsored. Um, <laughs> I try to have more like lean sources of protein and you know, an egg is good because it has protein, but it's not high in protein at all. An egg has six grams of protein. If you were purely only getting your protein out of eggs, how many eggs are you going to need to get to 100 grams of protein? That's a lot. That's a lot of eggs. It's like too many eggs to be healthy. What I'm saying is you need more protein. Protein is one of the three macronutrients, all of which are essential. I've literally talked about this in so many videos. Carbohydrates are essential fats and proteins and proteins are responsible for repairing muscle tissue after it's damaged working out damages muscle tissue exercise is actually inflammatory acutely 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 it generates reactive oxygen species and it's inflammatory but but we adapt and with rest and recovery and eating well recovery means eating well and fueling your body it down regulates systemic inflammation and it promotes positive health outcomes repairing muscle tissue and damaged muscle so that damage from exercise is what we want and what happens from exercise and that's why you have to rest after you exercise to then recover and then you adapt and you're healthier or fitter or stronger than than last time and that's another thing not getting enough energy in general and expecting favorable health expecting to gain muscle expecting to be improving when you're not getting enough energy for those people who do need to wait, lose weight eating in a slight deficit is more than enough because a drastic deficit will just impede favorable body composition and health hormonal health as well as physical health i've also realized that most people have body dysmorphia and eds are really common and it's something that's kind of made me just it's helped a lot actually because i've seen people that are 50 with an ed and i realized like eds don't go away if you don't work on it. So I don't want to be 50 and still struggling with my relationship with food. People can have so many misconceptions and it's not their fault half the time. It's the diet industry. Like this woman following Noom was influenced by the stuff that Noom was telling her. And she said how much weight she's dropped in a short period of time. And she was saying, why haven't I dropped enough when I'm eating this low? And I was saying, first of all, you've dropped too much in a short period of time. You would have just lost lean tissue. You literally fractured your foot recently from walking. You cannot be doing this to your body. Also, your metabolism is going to be coming to a halt because you don't eat enough. You eat less than what a toddler needs. You are not supporting a functioning, healthy body. So I'm trying to inc like encourage her to promote her health and to fuel herself think of food as fuel like your food is what fuels you to get stronger and to be healthier we live in a society that's very influenced by the weight loss industry and the weight loss industry 
it's an industry for a reason. They want to make money out of you. So if they're going to sell a thousand calorie diet that makes you drop weight drastically, they're making money from that and they're going to make more because that's unsustainable. You will put all the weight back on and more and then you will say, oh, that diet worked last time, so I'll do it again. But it's not sustainable. It doesn't work long term. Okay, the last diet thing I wanted to talk about before I move on to another topic is that carbs make you fat. That is absurd. It is absurd and ridiculous. The only way to put on body fat is to be eating more energy than you consume. So if you eat the same amount of energy that you burn, you're at maintenance calories. If you eat less than you burn, you are in a deficit and you will start to drop weight. And same goes for if you're in a surplus. It doesn't, it doesn't matter where they come from. That's just thermodynamics. And like obviously it does matter if you like in terms of your health, the types of foods that you're getting. But I'm just saying like in terms of like if you're going to lose weight or not, that's what determines it. So a client I had said like, oh, this person in my family is fat, but they ate bread. And I was like, so I know plenty of people who eat bread who are thin and even ripped because yeah, bread doesn't make you fat. That's ridiculous. What makes you fat is eating 4,000 calories of bread if your maintenance calories is 3,000. That's ridiculous. Um, and I don't want to say what that makes you fat. You're not fat. You just have fat. And that's completely fine. Everybody has body fat. Some people are just more than others. Anyway, let's move on to another topic now. Oh, this I was going to do a topic in itself, but I literally like got into it in the diet thing, which was the unrealistic weight loss goals of some people or expectations. So people want to drastically drop weight, which as I explained, literally will just lead to weight rebound and always losing favorable body mass or body weight. Favorable, favorable weight, muscle mass, lean tissue, bone tissue. What I also wanted to talk about here is that people believing that any weight loss is good weight loss and like focusing on the number on the scale. Muscle is denser than fat tissue. So if you have a client who's slightly overweight and they've been getting in aerobic exercise, so their fitness is, cardiorespiratory fitness is looked after, they're doing strength training, so their metabolic health and musculature is looked after, and they're eating pretty well, and they don't really drop weight, but you can see that they're looking healthier. So their body composition is more favorable, they have more lean tissue and less, but less body fat, but their weight hasn't changed. That's a good thing. That's why you take measurements for a weight loss client. So you can explain to them and educate them that the number on the scale is not the most important factor. Their overall health is. And one of the things that we can indicate that they're improving is that they're getting more lean tissue and losing fat tissue. So the number on the scales is not important. People who expect results and wanting to see the number drop on the scale really drastically, like within one to three weeks, that's also ridiculous because it takes, takes time. I forget the exact number, but I'm pretty sure like half a kilo of body weight or like a pound, which I don't know what a pound is because I think in kilograms, um, cause I'm not the only one single country in the world that thinks in their own different ways. I eat the USA half a kilo is equivalent to three and a half thousand calories. So say if you were in a deficit by two to 300 calories a day for a weight loss client, let's just say 200 calories a day, two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So 15 days, two, four. It take about close to it take about 18 days to drop to be in a three and a half thousand calorie deficit. So if that's half a kilo, that's 18 days for half a kilo. That's a very conservative weight loss, which I always think is the best. Conservative. It needs to be sustainable for your health metabolically, hormonally, and long term with your body composition and lean tissue. I've really harped on about that. I'm so annoying. Sorry. Okay, another point that I wanted to talk about is believing that exercise alone or introducing exercise is going to help with your goals, especially for weight loss clients. Predominantly just for weight loss clients. So yeah, for weight loss clients, basically. People who think that if they introduce exercise, they will lose their weight. You cannot out-train a bad diet, and most people know this, but it's, I mean, it is possible, actually. I will, I, I will rephrase that. It is possible to continue to eat a lot and to burn it off through exercise but the amount of exercise that you have to do to make up for being in a surplus is low-key ridiculous so we looked at a study in one of my lectures recently and they had a, two weight loss groups one was diet only weight loss group and one was exercise only weight loss group and for both groups to achieve a deficit each day of i think it was approximately 600 calories 
either through diet, which was just eating 600 calories less, or through exercise, the exercise group had to exercise at, it was either 70 to 80% of their max heart rate for one hour consistently. I think it was one hour and seven minutes consistently. So that's going on like a hard one hour and seven minute run every single day of the week to achieve the same weight loss, um, which is for most people not sustainable or realistic. Um, but then that also kind of explains why athletes or people who are very active do have a high energy needs because it uses energy to do physical activity. But for most people, the energy that they use exercising is only going to be like maybe 200 calories. So that's like thinking of like an average person going to the gym for 50 minutes or 60 minutes on a day. So it's not putting you in a deficit when you work out is what I'm trying to say. So you can't out-train a bad diet. However, introducing exercise and meeting the minimum requirements is very important for your health and it's not all about weight loss. I know I've related a lot of this to weight loss but that's because that's what a lot of, you know, clients' um, misconceptions are based around. Okay, another thing that I've just realized, and this isn't really like a myth, it's more just like a wow, majority of the population do not reach the exercise minimums and the recommended guidelines. So the recommended guidelines is to make 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous aerobic activity each week. It's actually 75 minutes vigorous and 150 minutes moderate, but I'm just going to say moderate to vigorous. Um, so that's the aerobic side covered. And then the resistance training side is to, sorry, I'm literally sliding slightly because the sun's moving. How rude of the sun. And the resistance side of things is to do at least two resistance training sessions in the week and you should be training all your muscle groups, all the different muscle groups. And most people do not meet those guidelines. Those guidelines are recommended to promote your health in every aspect of your health. Physical, all the different physical aspects of so many and mental health as well, which I will get to soon. So people expect to have decent health outcomes and to be a healthy human being without exercising and with being physically inactive without meeting these guidelines. And it's a little bit ridiculous. And maybe while you're young, you're fine, but this is important long term. They've done, I remember looking at a study at uni where they did, um, they compared men who were 60 and 40 and those who were training and not training. And the 60 year old men who trained frequently had the metabolic health of a 40 year old man. And it was vice versa. A 40 year old man who did not train and who was sedentary had a 60 year old's metabolic health. Another important thing is that exercise counteracts sitting all day. Sitting all day is considered sedentary. One of the recommended guidelines is you should not sit for more than eight hours a day, which people work nine to five and they're sitting for eight hours and then they sit again to get home. So they're sitting for more than eight hours a day and then they sit and watch TV in the night. So yeah, it's, exercise doesn't counteract all of that sedentary time. I think it does in some examples, but again, it's like ridiculous amounts, like maybe quick little marathon session, you know, sneaky three hour threshold run. This is a big one, spot reducing. People who, you know, come and they say, I want to lose fat right here. You cannot spot reduce. You can train that area, like your bicep, and build that muscle. So you can like focus on an area to hypertrophy and build the muscle, but you don't get to choose where fat distributes and where it comes from. Fat loss happens when you eat in a deficit and you eat well and you train, but you don't get to choose where it comes from. You get to choose where you strengthen and where you get hypertrophy of specific muscle groups. And that is going to be very genetic and very unique to every single individual. So I've talked about this before, but some people like have a higher body fat percent than other people, but might have more visible abs because they just don't store body fat in their midsection. They might store it in their thighs or their arms. And that's the thing about your body. It's so unique. And so you just have to fall in love and respect whatever your unique body type is. Okay. <clears throat> Specifically females that want to tone and lean, but not bulk. So I don't want to lift weights because I don't want to bulk. Lifting weights does not make you bulk up. Do you know how hard it is to get big from lifting weights? Mm, difficult. And of course there are some people that, this doesn't apply to everyone because there's always that anomaly. There's always that person who's genetically anabolic and they can do like a bicep curl and just like have ripped arms. But for the majority of the population, this applies to the majority of the population that is, you're not gonna get bulky from lifting weights. I lift weights. I'm, I'm not bulky. Like, I know I, like, flex my arms and, like, have ripped guns, but... 
you're not going to become the Hulk from lifting. If you want to lean and tone up, you need to build muscle. But there's a few more points we have to get through. I do want to have a disclaimer. I made a post on my um, PT Instagram account about antidepressants and exercise. Uh, the lighting's freaking annoying me right now. Let me just read the post that I wrote because I think I, I said it really well. I summed it up really well. And I also got all my evidence. It took me a while to do it. It was all about how exercise is equivalent and it has been proven and there is evidence backing it up is as equivalent, I should say, in reducing depressive symptoms as physical activity. However, I do want to add, of course, there is so many situations where people do meet all the lifestyle factors and they still have very poor mental health and medication is it's great. It's very good. And I'm not saying medication is bad at all. All I'm saying is that for a lot of the population, because I've noticed a lot of clients when I get them to fill out their screening form and ask the medication they take, there's a lot of people on antidepressants and often a lot of people on antidepressants who do not do any activity. They live a completely sedentary lifestyle, which is promoting depression because de physical inactivity promotes inflammation. Depression is a disease of inflammation, systemic inflammation in the body. So I just think the first point of call for a GP or someone referred to, um, someone who goes to a GP for depression, the first thing the GP should do is prescribe them a structured exercise program, get them to change their life. And if that doesn't help with their depression, they should also incorporate antidepressants and other medications. I'm not saying antidepressants are bad, but I'm just saying you need to address the things that you're doing that aren't helping your depression before you just go straight to the medication. So I'm not promote, I'm not trying to um, create a stigma around antidepressants at all. They're helpful and necessary for certain people. Okay, so exercise is just as effective at reducing depressive symptoms as antidepressant medications. I included a bunch of references in my post, so I'll also put them in the description box if I have enough like word limit. So antidepressants work by various mechanisms, depending on each drug. For example, there's like the serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which blocks up reuptake of serotonin. Um, but exercise also has psychological effects through chemical changes. Psychological effects that exercise has are super positive. As I was saying before, depression is an inflammatory disease. Physical inactivity is one of the poor lifestyle factors that promote inflammation, systemic inflammation in the body. Other poor lifestyle factors are things like obesity, sedentary, that's kind of the same as physical inactivity, um, poor diet, psychological stresses and traumas in life, smoking, those type of things. And that's why exercise is important in both physical and mental health. Check out the rest of that post for more on that. But basically, my point is exercise is important in your mental health too. Quickly, I want to address DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. So DOMS is delayed onset muscle soreness. I'm sure we've all experienced it. It's that pain after training because of the damage inflicted by training, which you do need to then recover from for the adaptations. The only thing clinically meaningfully proven to reduce DOMS is the repeat bout effect, which just means doing it again. So the more you do an exercise, the less you're going to get sore from it. There is no evidence supporting stretching, ice baths, massage, etc. to reduce DOMS. So often the best thing to do is start lighter and then gradually, you know, introduce exercise for someone who is sedentary and beginning an exercise program. But otherwise, you know what? I like the pain of DOMS and I'm pretty sure most of us do. Like it hurts, but it's kind of like a oh, good hurt. Like oh, I feel it, you know? Anyway, I was going to have a rant about fasting, but I think I could rant for an entire video about intermittent fasting and training fasted. Basically, it you start to break down muscle tissue and protein stores. If you eat the same calories throughout the day, if you meet your maintenance, then it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. It honestly just reduces and inhibits recovery and optimum training. So if you want a full video on that, comment below. But I'm just, I'm going to not talk about that and jump on to the last thing I was going to talk about, which is the importance of strength training in older adults. So I kind of touched on the fact that a 60 year old man who trains has the metabolic health of a younger adult. Basically, all I wanted to talk on in this topic is that as you hit 40 and start to age, I know pretty much all my audience is younger than that, um, but you know, you're going to likely get there one day if you're healthy. So, and it's important to start building up 
now so while you're under 40 you can keep you know making games building up tissue stores getting adaptations and as soon as you hit 40 you start to get a decline use the time you can to build up but when you hit 40 the way to prevent the decline and sometimes you can still gain is to train you need to be strength training and hitting the minimum strength training guidelines because when you hit 40 it is exponential the reduction in muscle size in muscle strength in muscle power and with that is also lots of psychological and physiological effects that affect other systems in your body like your mental and cognitive function balancing being able to be a functional and independent human it's so important so making sure you exercise more just move more and obviously for those people recovering from you know being way too underweight and over exercising i'm not saying go and move more you probably move enough i'm talking about people who don't meet the guidelines and just like regular hum human human ah! regular uh, i'm at the point where i can't speak anymore regular human beings who want to get into that fitness and healthy routine this is kind of good knowledge to have knowing it means you're more likely to get into action and you have more purpose behind it because it's important to you you value your health and your well-being physically and psychologically so mm, what was the other old people thing i was gonna talk on being over i'm pretty sure it's 45 for men and 50 for women when i do consults with people if people are over that that is a risk factor being over middle age is a risk factor for disease so you need to do all the things to protect your health 25 is the age that you're um what was it again let me try and try to remember first year uni stuff i actually hate the lighting right now and i'm just like not bothered to do anything about it cardiac output cardiac output decreases one percent per year from the age of 25 so you need to do all the things you can to reduce the reduction and try to combat it and better it anyway the lighting has decided that this video needs to end and so has my voice so has my energy levels Mm, Saturday Arvo, my only Arvo that's free, which means I need to use it to do my five uni assignments that I have right now. Mm. So I hope you guys found this video informative and enjoyable. And let me know if you want more things like this. Apologies that it was a bit messy and that I talk so much, but thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!